Hello everybody, in this tutorial I will show you how I knit my scrappy blanket with these mitered squares and I will explain you how to cast on, how many stitches, how I do my decreases and especially how you will be able to knit the squares lined up all with the ridge in the middle all in the same direction. Um, you can also see it wait here because if you do what I did in the beginning your squares and also the decrease ridge in the middle everything goes wild and crazy and I show you how to make it very easy and comfortable for you to knit without thinking too much and how I figured out to get everything straight and fun and pretty and neat. So today I will show you what my problem with the Cozy Memories blanket was and how I solved it. Here you see an example of my current project. It's one of my color blocks I showed you in the intro. And because I wasn't quite sure how to figure out to get all the lines in the same direction, you see, for example, I made this wrong and this and this. Uh, some people like to go wild or they do a certain pattern with these lines, but what I was going for was this, <laughs> so that all my squares look into the same direction, not only because of these diagonals, but also I use a lot of self-strapping yarns. And here you see, this is the cast on edge. And then you decrease until you reach the point where you only have two stitches. That shows, um, so the color repeat gets smaller, 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 and you create these, I would say, square shaped um, color repeats, as you see here, when you use a lot of self-strapping yarn you see it's like a box you create always on this edge if you use solids you are not noticing it but for example here where you see a long white stripe it's not a long light yellow stripe anymore it's like a square because you decrease in that direction and it is very obvious when you do it always the other way around. For example, like here. You see? This square has it here, and this has it here, and this has it here, or here. I, I don't like it so messed up. And now I will show you how you can knit this blanket, how I do it, and so that the lines go into the same direction and I will help you to enjoy the process because there is a cast on I don't enjoy so much. But if you do it a certain way, you only have to do it a few times throughout the blanket. Let's start. What you will need are scraps of yarn, um, two knitting needles in the correct size, or you use um, a circular needle. And I would recommend to use a stitch marker, something like that. And you could also use a clippy marker and I will show you in just a second why a clippy marker could be handy. I usually use one of those. I use thicker yarn and thicker needles than I use usually because my blanket is in fingering weight yarn but it's easier for you to see if I use thicker yarn. So for demonstration purposes I use three and a half millimeter needles and a yeah I would say DK weight yarn. Okay you start when you want to knit the blanket as I do with 40 stitches. You have to cast on 40 stitches. Here comes the first little hint. To make sure you have enough to cast on and not a too long tail at the end I wrap around the yarn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. 
Now I know I need this much to cast on 10 stitches. 10, 20, 30 and 40 and a little bit for a tail at the end. And now I know I have enough and not too much to cast on. That is very helpful when you use scraps and you don't have so much. I would guess you need about 5 gram for a mitered square in fingering weight yarn. Then you cast on 40 stitches. If you don't know how to cast on, I would recommend a tutorial. I will link it in the description box below by Very Pink Knits. I will go through this now very quick. Now you see you have this much left and this is enough to weave in the end. Now you turn your work and you knit the first 20 stitches. You do, if you want to knit it as I do, you don't do nothing fancy at the beginning. You just knit the second row. You are on the back side of your work right now. You can try to remember that you always have the tail on the r right side and you know, okay, that means I'm on the back side of my work. Or you pay attention to the pearl bumps. It will be a bit more difficult with fingering weight yarns, but you can compare if you just have a look. Here you see these typical pearl bumps and if you switch it around, you see this pretty edge of the long tail cast on, like half of the V. And here you see pearl bumps. And when you see the pearl bumps on the first row, so the cast on row, you are on the back side of the work. But I will show you another trick so don't, you s don't have to pay attention while you knit. Now I have to count, I'm sorry. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. After 20 stitches you place your marker and you knit the other 20 stitches. I think it's easier to place the marker after the cast on. You can also do it after casting on 20 stitches, then place the marker and then cast on the rest 20 stitches, but I think it's fiddly to do that. You knit the left stitches, it's only knitting, nothing complicated, and you turn your work. And now you have <clears throat> the first two rows of your mitered square. Now I will show you how I decrease. I don't have a very prominent center stitch and if you want to have the same you only have to do something very easy. You knit until you reach the two stitches before the marker. So that makes 18 stitches in this first decreasing row. 18 stitches and then you have two stitches left before you reach the marker. Okay, on the right side of the marker everything I do is knit two together. And then you slip the marker and then you do the next decrease and I do slip, slip, then you do this and knit the two together and you knit the rest of the stitches. No worries, I will show you again. You just have to knit the last stitches. Now you have 19 stitches on both sides. But before you decrease another time, you only do knit stitches on the back side. So this was the decreasing round. You turn your work, you are on the back side because you see pearl bumps and you have the tail on the right side. So you knit the stitches 
and then I will show you again in a close-up how you decrease on the other round. So I have knit the stitches on the back side and I'm on the front side again, on the right side. You see it because the tail is on the left, that means you are on the right side. And there are two stitches before we reach the marker. And what do we do to decrease? We do simply knit two together. It's as easy as it is. Now you slip the marker and now you do, you go into the stitch as if to knit, slip, slip, and then you go into the stitches with the left needle, get the yarn, pull it through, and then you have done your slip slip knit. And then you finish knitting the last stitches. Now you have 18 stitches on both sides of the marker. And you continue now until you have four stitches on the needle. Don't forget, on the back side you always only knit. You only decrease when you are on the right side. And now the clippy marker comes in handy. If you don't want to pay attention where your yarn tail is or if it's confusing for you to see what is back and what is front side, just take a clippy marker and clip it on the front side. You know, the front side is where you have this, these pretty lines on the cast on row. Or when you see the tail is on the left, then you are on the right. So it's the opposite. So you put a clippy marker on the correct side and now you always know when you see the clippy marker, you have to decrease. I think it's helpful. It's, you won't need it when you have two or three squares in your blanket, but maybe it will be helpful for you on your first square. So we will see us again when you only have four stitches left on the needle. So now we have four stitches left on the needle. You are on the right side. You see it here um, because I put the clippy marker here. The tail is on the left and now you do just a normal decrease. We are two stitches before we reach the marker. Now I will try to do another close up. We do knit two together. Now you can turn off the marker and now you do slip, slip and knit. That might feel fiddly for you when you only have the two stitches left, but if you are careful, you will, you will be successful. Now you turn your work and I don't knit another row. I simply do a knit two together on the back side when I have two stitches left. Then I cut the yarn I pull the loop a little bit bigger and then I pull the yarn through the loop and I pull tight. And your first square is done. And now I will show you how we do the next um, square. The next square I will do above this one. But first I want you to show the back side of my blanket because the way I cast on, I create 
Hmm, that's difficult, it's blowing out. I create these ridges on the side. You have to decide now. If you want to knit as I do, you have to be okay with these ridges where I pick up the stitches. If you don't like that, um, I, I can show you what you can do instead, but I won't do the tutorial about it. Okay? When you pick up the stitches as I do, you create these ridges. Okay, now we will knit the next square. So to pick up the stitches, I have the square in this direction. Here is our cast off edge. I will go into this bump here. You know, I take it very easy. I'm not so, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> so strict with everything. So here's a good point to start. I will go through it. Sometimes it's easier to take the crochet hook with so much uh, with such a thick yarn like I do now. It's no problem. You can do it. Leave a little bit of a tail to weave in at the end. And now what I do is I pick up the stitches in between the pearl bumps. Okay. I, I told you I can show you how I do it and I can show you how other people are doing it and so they don't create these ridges. I just go next to this bump and pick up. Another time I, I pull it out, out. Here's a pearl bump and I go into the space between the pearl bumps. Ta-da! The people who don't create riches and make very tidy and pretty blankets, they go into these pearl bumps. And with thick yarn, um, it may, may be easier, but also here it's, yeah, okay, with thick yarn it's possible. But I have to be honest, this method is very challenging for me and I don't enjoy the process, although it will be very pretty if you do it. If you do it my way, just go into the space between the paw bumps and it's so easy. And I don't even pay attention if I go. Now I will try to f get the focus. You can go under this one strand you see here. Or you can go one below into this V-shaped strand. You see this here? Oftentimes it's easier to go under this. But if you... <laughs> To be honest, don't pay too much attention. Just go wherever it's good for you and yeah, the blanket will have a back side. And if you don't mind, yeah, just see where you can find the strand or the hole to go under. The, f the one strand here or you go into the V here. I think it would be good if you stay with one way, but yeah, it's not I will go <laughs> I will do both now to see how it looks at the end, <laughs> but sometimes it's so difficult to find the spots or the yarn is so dark or maybe it's uneven spun or whatever now we I haven't count I'm sorry zwei vier sechs acht zehn zwölf. 14, 16, 18, 19. So one is myth missing. Perfect. I will go into the last edge here. So now you can place a marker already or you wait. I will wait because I think it's a little bit fiddly. And now we come to the cast on stitches. And that is something I don't enjoy so much, but it's the best way to do it, in my opinion. Okay, I think it's called knitted cast on, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, you wrap the yarn around your thumb like this. And then you go under this yarn with your needle and you pull, but not too tight. Not too tight. Now you have cast on a stitch. 
but don't pull too tight because otherwise you won't be able to knit the stitch. And then you do it again. You wrap it around your thumb, go under with your needle and pull. But please don't pull tight. And this you do 20 times. Twenty. Now you turn your work and if you didn't pull too tight it will be still fiddly to knit these stitches but it will be possible. <laughs> so now you simply knit the stitches. It will feel weird and it's not so stretchy as the normal long tail cast on but you will get you will get it. If you have sharp needles, uh, you can try those, maybe higher, higher sharps, or I don't know, there are several sharp needles. They will make it easier for you, but if you don't m make them too tight, these loops, you can take every needle you usually use. So the first 20 stitches, now we need 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Now you can place the marker. And knit the other the other stitches. Now you don't have to count. And turn your work. So because I used the clippy marker, I won't be confused. I can easily see that is my front side. And now you do the exact same thing. You decrease on the right side, then you turn your work and knit the back side, then you turn your work and decrease again on the right side until you have two stitches on the needle, you knit the two stitches together and pull the yarn through the loop. But I will show you the decreases one more time. Okay, we knit until we reach two stitches before we reach the marker. Okay. On the right side of the marker, we just to knit two together. Then we slip the marker and do slip, slip, and knit. Ta da! That's it. And now you knit the rest of the stitches. Finish it, and then we will do this square. Now you have fin finished the second square and I just want to show you um, as a quick reminder I picked up the stitches sometimes under one strand of the yarn and sometimes into the V stitch you were able to see between the paw bumps and we wanted to see how this goes when you don't stay cohesive with your knitting and as you can maybe see it looks a little woggly and on the back side you can see the difference. So if you only pick up under one strand, like here, the pickup line is nearly not visible. And where you have these big bumps and ridges, that's where I put the needle into the V instead of here under the one strand. So you can decide how you want this to be and how you want this to look. Um, yeah, but I would suggest you stay cohesive. Always do the same thing. Um, 
yeah I want to show you how it looks when you always do the same pick up stitches and then it looks much tidier and neater as you see here and I have decided to do the ridge so to pick up in the in this part of the v-stitch I showed you okay now I will show you how to cast on first and then to pick up the stitches so now we knit this square I take again another color I do again my counting as I always do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and I need 20 so I double it and I leave a little bit for the tail and now I to I do the cast on as I always do it the long tail cast on one two nineteen twenty and you have a little bit left to even at the end now I put the marker first okay wait this has to be oh yeah that's okay okay just to be clear you have cast on the stitches now that's where your next square will start and now you pick up 20 stitches To have a neat edge, you should go into the corner of the square and that's your first stitch. And now I would suggest, I hope you can see it, always go in one of the spots. I always go here because it's easier to see, in my opinion. This is easier to see than to lift this. But if you only knit under this, you have not really a ridge and maybe you find this prettier. But I go for the easier one. It's so easy to see. It's always between the two pearl bumps or the Garda ridge bumps, how you want to call them. So two, four, five, six see, you see there is already this hole it's so easy to see seven eight nine ten wait i need more yarn eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and now you have to find, I always tuck the yarn here a little bit, I haven't woven in any ends yet so I tuck the leftover yarns to find the neat edge. Okay, I will go And now you do what you did before. You turn your work, knit, turn your work, and then you do the dec decreasing rows, the decreases on the front side, knit 18 stitches, knit two together, slip the marker, slip, slip, knit, knit the last 18 stitches. And you go on like the first square until you have two stitches on the needles, you knit the two stitches together as a t knit two together and then you pull the yarn and pull it through the last loop. So you finish this square and the last square I will show you is this one. There we only have to pick up stitches. Now you have finished the third square and we will do the fourth square together 
we will pick up 20 stitches here, place the marker and pick up 20 stitches here and then we will go on as we did before. You turn your work, knit the row, turn your work again and then you are on the front side again and you will knit 18 stitches, knit two together, slip the marker, slip slip knit and knit. So before we do this I just want to um, quickly repeat myself so to make your life easier if you do color blocks as I do or if you make a big blanket it doesn't matter I would suggest you if you also don't enjoy the the cast on mess method with the thumb I, I showed you and you don't want to do it every once in a while I would suggest just add a few squares in this direction and then you have to do it on every square but then you are done for the rest of I don't know 200 squares or so or how many you want to uh, knit in this direction because then you only have to do the normal cast on pick up in this direction and I usually do this I make five squares in this direction five squares in this direction and then I always only have to pick up the stitches because that is the easiest part of the blanket in my opinion to add a new square so it's up to you how you do it but now I show you how to pick up again a last time I will use this color again because I don't have so many different DK weight yarn scraps again you have to try to find a neat start the last stitch I take this one here you see the V the two stitches at uh, the two legs of the V the V <laughs> sorry you get your new color and if you are struggling as I am now just grab a crochet hook and do the first stitch with a crochet hook it's easier okay and again as we did before we cast on in total 20 stitches first two, three, four, sixteen, <laughs> seventeen, eighteen, nineteen and now you have to see where you want to go on. If you want to make a stitch in the corner again or if you go on here and I really I'm not so sure here I would say I would start here where the next square begins so I will pick it up place the marker and then you do the next stitch So this is 21, 22 and so on. And again you have to decide if you want to make it easy but then you create this ridge here. So easy is to go in this hole between the two power bumps. The sometimes not so easy way is to only go under this first leg and then you don't create a ridge. It, it's prettier I guess but also sometimes harder to see. Now we see how many stitches do, do I need. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19, 1 stitch is left. Here you see the last stitch and now you would just knit the fourth square and you will go on like this. 